Hello and welcome to the first ever episode of Tash Teachers on this new community, Tash Tribe. Thank you all so much for believing in this concept and for joining up. I'm incredibly excited over the foreseeable future to just keep building this community, adding content, adding presets, and hosting live events. Maybe as well, I'll be able to then start doing some actual on-location events and have some exclusive shows for you guys to come to, or maybe in-person masterclasses. But I'm just incredibly excited at the prospects of everything that there is to do. I'd like to look at today a way to generate random melodies that really feel very modal. Um, if you've ever played around with modes, you may have found out that it's sometimes quite difficult to keep the sound sounding like that, because as you suddenly move to another chord, all of a sudden you've now made it feel like major again. So the technique I want to show you today utilizes, instead of chords, just a sort of root in the background. I've got this pad and drone and the drone in the bass is just doing a C and the pad is doing a C and a C and then also a, a quietish G. So we've got a root and a fifth in there. But you'll see that this is just very, very simple. We've got this pad. And if I wanted to, I could even get rid of that G. So now it's literally just C's and a C there. And what I want to show you now is if I were to make another instrument, say some sort of little stab with polymer. Um, if I were to now play some notes over this, maybe I'll do a C. Oh, zoom in. Okay, I'm going to do some sort of C here. And if I were to do the C major scale, which of course we all know is C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. If we were to now listen to this with that C and that, uh, sorry, the C in the bass and the C in that pad, now it really does have a very major feel, even though we've just got one note playing there. But this is quite similar to the concept of uh, harmony, which they wouldn't really consider it to be in Indian classical music, where instead of there being chords in, in Western music, a lot of the time you have... Um, moving from different chords to create tension and release and sort of consonance and dissonance. But in Indian classical music, you just have a drone. You have something that's usually the root, the fifth, and it's played on a tampura usually, which is a four-stringed instrument. And really all it does is it creates this harmonic bed, this uh, foundation for then whatever instrument is on top, whether it's a sitar, a bansuri, which is a type of flute. It provides that uh, framework for it to play against as a melody. So whereas Western music is a lot more focused on harmony and chords and different melodic lines bouncing off of each other, Indian classical music allows for a far more, in my opinion, deep, uh, dreamy, meditative state because it's all in this one field. So let's have a little look here at what we can do. Because if I were to tell you that having this on here, all I need to do to change this to be a completely different mood, let's say Dorian, is I would just need to take this B and this E and I just need to bring them down one. And now all of a sudden that pad sound doesn't... it doesn't interfere with this new vibe, but we're now in a completely different space. I could also then bring the A and the D down to make it Phrygian. Now we're in a completely different space. I could go back to having, uh, let's bring all of these guys up again. If I just bring the B down, I've got Mixolydian. But anyway, the point of what I want to show you now is that instead of having any kind of melody that we've picked out and drawn in or even played in, I want for Bitwig to come up with all sorts of cool random melodies coming out of these chords. And so instead of having them go out in time, what I'm going to do is, it might be easier just to do this, I want to set up this, all of the notes on top of each other. And if I were to now loop this single note and press play, it sounds awful. And the reason it sounds awful is because every single note is playing at once. If we take all of these notes and now say, okay, well, we only want an 11.11% chance that any one of these will play at any one time. If we now listen, what we get is a sort of stuttered, infinitely evolving pattern. And if we make some of these notes longer, it 
cool. And of course, we could now call this Major, because that's our first mode. To take a Major scale to being the next mode, because there are seven modes, it goes Major, Dorian, Phrygian, Lydian, Mixolydian, Locri uh, Aeolian, which is minor, and then Locrian. Locrian of the seven is the one which I find to be the most unusable. And I've yet to have a, a sort of fond moment with it, and I consider myself a, a real avid lover of the spirit of music. But that's one, one part I just can't seem to jive with. But if, in order for us to take these different modes, uh, to take the C major s scale and make it into C Dorian, all we need to do is, I'm just going to copy these down so we have every single one of them. This will be Dorian Phrygian. I don't know if I've spelt that right. Um, Lydian, Mixo Lydian, Aeolian, and finally Locrian. Okay, so in order to make a major scale into the my into the Dorian, all we need to do is take the second and the seventh note. So in this case, it's the D. Sorry, the third and the seventh note. So in this case, a B and an E, and we're just going to flatten that. So let's listen in major. Now let's listen in Dorian. Quite cool. Okay, in order to make the major into Phrygian, which is the third mode, we flatten the second and the third, the sixth and the seventh. So they just come down like this. Let's listen to Phrygian. In order to go from major to Lydian, all you do is take the fourth note, so in this case F, and make it sharp. There's only one note difference. Let's have a listen to Lydian. Anyways, mix Lydian, all we need to do is take the top note, or the last note, the seventh, and we're going to make that B flat. So Mixolydian is just flattening the seventh note. Quite cool. Um, now Aeolian. For some reason I can never seem to remember this off the top of my head, so I always have to figure it out by just doing this. I make the A minor scale, which is of course all the white notes. It's the C major scale, which is starting on the sixth. And then I just shift it all up. So in this case, it's flattening the third, it's flattening the sixth, and it's flattening the seventh. So three, six, and seven. There we go. So this would be minor. And then finally, Locrian, I'm just going to forget out because it's I would never use it to make music with. Okay, so this may not sound super good at the moment, and that's uh, because really it's just some silly little sine waves hitting some random notes. What I want to do is create a system so that as this happens we're having only ever one note at a time no no chords because that's one of the issues we're having here is that at times there we go at times we're getting multiple notes and i don't want that so one of the solutions around this could be to say okay well even though sometimes we're going to get multiple notes here well we could go to the instrument and we could make it mono so we bring those voices down to mono and now we press play and we have a small problem, and that problem is that the fact that in our efforts to make it so that there was only ever one note playing in the melody, we've actually now limited the ability for the notes to overlap in that delicious way. And so I want to create a minute, like a, a mono melody that can then be played on a long release, soft sounding, delicious synthesizer. In order to do that, we need to take this signal that we're getting here, and we need to make it mono, but not make the, the synth mono. And the way that I'm going to do that is by taking a note grid, and all I have to do is nothing. That's it. Note grid should, well, I, I have mine set to mono on voices, so if yours isn't, that's the only thing you will need to do. But if you make it mono, you'll now see if I turn this on and off, 
Okay, I've got to put the synth back to not mono. I'm going to actually put it to like, say, six or so. Yeah, there we go. Straight off the bat, we're getting one note. And if I start to make these quite long as well, you'll see it's just not quite right. So as I now turn on note grid, now we're getting a monophonic, or we're getting a single note melody line being played with long release. So I can make them long. Which is really lovely for these kind of droning sounds. Let's go back to having the, the drone in. I might put the G in, the fifth. Might be a good idea to get a touch of some form of reverb, I'm assuming. Lovely. Now, instead of just boring you and putting you to sleep with this, I think what might be quite fun is to create a, a sort of dance banger with it. And so I've got a few things prepared here that I'm going to bring in and out. So let's just mute all of these guys. And I've got uh, a kick drum set up straight away here so that we can just get bobbing. So let's have a quick listen. try out one of these other modes now. Maybe let's try Phrygian. This is really cool for if you're doing organic house and that kind of Middle Eastern Latin feel. Also, depending on how long this clip is, you can make it faster or slower. So if I were to double the speed of this, If I were to add more notes in, say take the whole octave and shift it up, now I can have some lower notes and some higher, but of course because it's still monophonic we're only ever going to get one at a time, I can put glide on. Anyways, I've also got here, if I get rid of this drone bass, I've got this very simple bass that just goes ba 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 ba. I want to turn that up a bit. I'm going to bring back this from being so stupid with its glide, and we'll go back to Dorian. It's one of my favorite sounding modes. We might want to do a bit of delay as well. I've also got a couple of drums here. Let's bring some of these in. You'll notice that a lot of my volume faders are just dipping. That's because I'm using a segment uh, modulator here that's connected to the kick drum. So this kick drum here, you'll see that if I pause this, now there's no side chain. So the side chain is linked to here at a project level. And instead of then modulating the volumes down on some of these devices, I've actually just done it here because it gives you a really nice visual feedback of how much, um, how much you're actually ducking the signal. Anyways, I've got a couple of other sounds here. And before we start getting really vibey with this synthesizer, you'll notice that I've got this bass and this is just a C. And then I've got this pad that we were listening to at the beginning, which is just a C, and of course that G, and the G is the same in every one of the modes. There's always the G there. So that's just your fifth, that's gonna be fine. I've then also got here a key, and this, I believe, is just playing a C and a G again. So this is just some sort of piano sound, I think, and I've put on a chorus just to make it a bit wider. And if we listen to that with the pad, maybe we can pan one left and one right a little bit. Then I've got that bass. Let's stop the kick again so that we can get the full, uh, full effect without the side chaining. And then I've also got this very simple arp. And this arp is just a C and a G and a C and a G again. And if we have a listen to what it sounds like,
And that's because I've taken this second step. If we just go back to making this what it was before. Instead of having notes on every 16, I get rid of that one. And you can just sort of fill in some of the fill in some of the gaps with then maybe a change. So I'm gonna make it go up. Up nine is up a seventh, so that would always work as well. Sorry, if I want to go up seven, that's a fifth. So that's going to be totally fine uh, with regardless whatever note it is. If I go down five, that's a fifth as well. And yeah, if we now take everything out, you'll see that we have no, we don't have our melody in yet, but we do have enough vibe that people would be dancing at least for the sort of intro of the song. then means all we need to do is bring in a little bit of our synth here and this can be the thing that creates the interest for us and because this music is completely unchanging we've just got this dronal basis this thingy here is just going to create all of these delicious moments of because it's so simple like just stacking that melody against this foundational harm or this foundational root and fifth. Why don't we do some sort of interesting things with a random to really get this baby singing. I'm going to put this on note mode and hold rate of zero so every time it gets a note it's going to give a different value and I'm actually going to copy and paste a few of these just even before because I don't want to have to keep copying and pasting them. I just want to get straight in. So if I take First of all, most actually, let's just side chain this synth as well. Okay, I'm going to take this first random, and I'm going to use this on the skew, maybe. I'm going to make it bipolar. Maybe we'll do some on the amount of this EG. Cool, now that's creating a little bit of extra movement. Ooh! Could be quite a good idea to do something to the shape of this EG. So I'm going to do a bit of decay, but I'm also going to make it bipolar, so we get values above and below. Ooh, that's sounding really cool. Okay, let's take this guy, and I'm going to do the same thing with the decay of the actual voice. Bipolar. Do the same with the release. Ooh! Might do some to the fold. Maybe a little bit to noise as well. It's so effective having this just every note randomizer situation. Do some with the release of the envelope as well. Which one did I do that with? Maybe we could do something to the attack as well. A little bit of attack, never hurt anyone. Really nice. Okay, let's try a different mode. Let's try out what it would be like in Mixolydian now. You can see how instantly it's just completely changed the vibe. Maybe we also want to add some more high notes. Maybe we wanted a bit of a uh, random on the, the glide as well then every now and then one of the notes is going to really get a bit wonky. Oh, that's really cool. Maybe if we change this to digital. If we were to half the length of these clips, so if we were to uh, scale it by 50, sorry, by 200%, can get like a different feel. So in this case, it's doing a more 
quarter note vibe. So we can actually duplicate this and have one doing an eighth note for our sort of melody. And then let's see if we were to make this slower. I'm going to do a different sound. Let's maybe go for the swarm. See what that sounds like with maybe a nice bit of attack. That's really cool. Let's bring in the drone bass. Which isn't currently being side-chained. Should we try a different mode? Let's try Phrygian again. Clear our head so that we're hearing the new mode properly. I mean, that's just such a cool way of being able to really elicit the feeling of, um, of a mode. Also, you don't have to then keep, once you've, once you've figured this sort of thing out, you can then occasionally go to a different note. So I'm just going to put all of this and call this drone, because all of this, even if it's got the R, I would consider this the sort of drone vibe. I'm going to copy and paste this down, and if I click one and then select all of them, and if this isn't on, I can turn that on. And now I can see every single one of the clips all at once. And I want to change this to a different note. We're in Phrygian. And so we know for sure that if we want to keep the feeling of Phrygian coming through... Turn the kick off for a sec. Yeah, if we wanted to keep it feeling Phrygian, what we're going to probably want to do is change the bass note to another note that, or the, the, the drone note, to another note that is characteristic of C Phrygian. So we could try going to uh, B flat. So let's call this uh, B flat, and this is our C. Let's see what this feels like in the context with, uh, with all of the rest of it there. Ooh. And you see, you have, like, all we've really done is changed one note. That, oh, that feels really Phrygian to me. Why don't we take a couple more of the others? What else have we got in Phrygian that we could use? Well, we could do the A flat. We've got this G sharp note here, so we'll call that A flat. Um, and then we've also got uh, the D flat and the E flat. Uh, so why don't we try... I'm just moving this bottom one. So we've got an E flat now. It's probably not what we'd call it. I think we'd actually call it D sharp, but still. Uh, then we might also finally just do a C sharp here. So now let's have a quick listen in the context of Phrygian going through these different notes as the as the holding down the foundational root. This is our C. This is our B flat. Play A flat now. Oh, might as well move to our E flat. And we've got our D flat. Really, really vibey. And in fact, I'm going to make all of these clips uh, length. They're all 32. How long are they? I'm going to make all of these clips after, let's do round robin in block. I'm going to do after uh, four bars. So now it's just going to automatically skip through. And let's just put the drums back in and see what this sounds like. Bloody beautiful. 
Um, yeah, no, of course, we could do that with any of these other notes as well. So if we wanted it to be Dorian, well, we could keep that B flat, but we would want to change this uh, A flat to an A. And then this E flat is fine. And then this D flat, we would want to change this to a D. So just shift that all up one. Now if I play this Dorian mode, and we'll do the same thing. straight to the E flat. Why don't we change everything faster every two bars? Dial down the side chaining a little bit on everything. Yeah, I mean, uh, being able to just take some sort of drone like this. Let's turn it off round robin for a second so we don't have to lose our mind. Also, another thing is, if we wanted to make this faster, we could do, say, the 16th note. This could be good. Uh, shift that over here. But that now feels a little bit too fast, perhaps. So what we could do is just slim it down even more in terms of how many of these notes are getting through. Now it is a monophonic signal. If I were to take the humanized device, I can now start to bring the chance down. Super nice. I could also take a quantized device. And we could tell it to quantize to eighth notes. But we could have some form of LFO turning it on and off. If I put this into, I believe, if we put this into some sort of group, I can take a random and I can use that to turn it on and off. If I do note hold, Maybe I need to go the other way. Now we're getting some eighth notes coming through, I believe. I'm not sure if this is actually turning on or not. Does it go the other way? Oh, there we go. Nice. We haven't actually listened to Aeolian or Minor yet. Let's give that a go. Also, if we're in these, you know, one of these keys like Minor, there's nothing saying that we can't actually add in one of the other defining notes. So in this key chord, I might add the... Uh, the characteristic of the C minor that is in the D Dorian scale by just adding a D sharp in there. And I might even add one on top just to see what that sounds like. So let's see in context. So if we were to change the envelope on this synthesizer here to an AD instead, we've got this randomized situation happening on the decay here. So if I also put on this envelope looping, we're going to get some really wild, rather strange um, sort of ratcheting. Oh, you see when it gets short, it repeats the envelope. It's a looping envelope. And this can sound really cool on these kind of uh, end of the world synth sounds.
Another thing that makes this particularly cool is bringing down the chants uh, on both this main melody and this one which we had doing at the half speed. Uh, because as you start to have multiple instruments being able to do these kind of strange random generations from a particular mode, you can actually bring the chants down so things are happening far less often. Um, let's actually, in the context of this, just listen what happens. This is having you know quite a lot of notes playing at all one time. But if I bring both of these chances down to say 20 something percent, yeah, I mean that's giving us a far more bouncy and quite random feel. And then still we've got those drums and, and everything holding down the fork. Try a different scale again. Let's try it with Phrygian now. We could also take then these uh, these little pieces of, of melody. Now that it's coming out monophonically, we could just record this in here. So I'm going to take uh, main melody and just record the instrument there. And of course, if we increase the chance, we're going to start to have more instruments come up or more notes come up. Play with that chance. But yeah, this is super fun. Well, folks, that's sadly all we have time for today, but I do hope that this video was useful. If you enjoyed it, then stay tuned because I've got some more great content for you coming next week. Feel free to jump down below in the, the, the link below the video and you will find the download link to this project file and uh, I'd love if you'd download it, have a little fuck around and see what's what. If you end up making anything cool with it, why don't you share it in the community? I'm sure we'd all love to hear that. And uh, in the meantime, happy Monday and happy creating.